Hey guys, uh, it's me. So, people asked me to do a shimming video, a shimming guide. So, I thought I might as well do it while my gun's apart. Here it is. Uh, Lonex gearbox shell. Ride SC14-1 uh, DSG gears. JG Red, um, but it has an SHSD type pinion on here. And a few different bushing bearings combinations, not important. Anyways, uh, here's my guide. This is the process I go through. These gears are already shimmed, but I'm just going to walk you through the process as, as if I was doing it for the first time. So, right, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is set up this uh, apparatus right here. You have the top half of your gear box shell, the bevel gear, um, the motor grip, and then the motor installed. This is the first step you're going to want to do because you're going to want to shim your bevel gear first because um, your motor, your pinion gear is the only gear that doesn't, you know, it's stationary. You can't shim that. So you have to shim everything else to that. Um, and if you shim the bevel to that, if you shim all the other gears and you shim the bevel separately, it might not have good meshing with the spur. So you're just going to want to start with the bevel. So uh, the first thing you do is adjust your motor height. And you kind of want to guess the height of the bevel. So I usually start off by putting 0.02, or sorry, 0.2 millimeters of shim on the bottom or top. The top is the flat side. The bottom is the thinner side. Just so we're clear on that. You want to put it on the top. So this part, this bottom, I guess now, but top of the bevel. 0.2. I usually that's what I start about with. Um, and then you're going to want to adjust your motor height. Now the way you do that is you see, you look and see the the meshing. You want the teeth on the pinion to be parallel with the teeth on the bevel. So if you have a version 3, obviously do this with the motor cage and it's much easier because you don't have the script in the way. But I don't know if you can see this, that's focusing. Um, that's pretty much perfect. You just you want the teeth to be parallel to each other so they have the best meshing and the least amount of noise. So once you've done that um, and it's perfect, then you can kind of guess the bevel height. If there is significant movement like this, this should this is perfect. I already know because I already shimmed it. But you want it. I'd rather it be too loose from the start than too tight because you'd rather be putting on than taking off. Um, so that's why I start with 0.2. But usually you end up putting a little more on. At least I do. So just kind of guess that. Guess the distance. Then the next thing you're gonna want to do is look at the bevel height, so as I'm doing that, I'll just talk more. Um, this is important so that you have the least amount of noise because 90% of the noise that comes out of your gun is from bevel pinion. The other gears are important, but not as important as getting this right. This is basically the hardest part of shimming is getting the bevel pinion, unless you have another problem that you don't want. Okay, so now um, get the rest of your gearbox. The just the shell. I sometimes I don't even put the wiring in when I'm shimming, but in this case I will. Um, just put the bevel in. Close the shell. Close the shell. I usually put three or four screws in, just the ones around the bevel, just so you just so it's tight. There's no cracks. Some people put all. I don't think that's necessary. I just put three or four in around the gear. Like I'll put these three in. And now you can also test. Now you can also um, shim the distance. Although I do that at the end. Um, I don't put any shims at the top of the bevel, which is the thin part, just so I can really get the bevel height exact. Because if you get it too tight and it doesn't move at all when there's no motor in here like right now has like about 0.01 millimeters of movement which is because it's already shim but if I was actually shimming this thing and I didn't know um, I would have no shims at the top I'm sorry the bottom the thin part the yeah the thin part I would have no shims on there just so I can tell perfectly just so I can tell without any um, interference where the bubble is at in reference to the pinion because if it's already too tight, then you can't see how much it's moving up and down. So don't put any, when you're doing this, don't put any shims at the bottom of the bevel. Just 
have them on the side that's the fat side, the, the flat side. Yeah. So just put your then just put your grip on, and I like to do this with the wires. This way I can hear how it sounds, even though gears under no load are very misleading. Sometimes it, if you lower the motor all the way, it's gonna sound quiet, quiet, quiet under no load. That's just because it's loose. Um, but then you put load on it and it sounds horrible. So what you want to do is not really care about how it sounds as long as it's, I mean, as obviously as long as it's meshing well. And you can even see that you can see if it's too tight to it at this point. So if it's if it's too tight and it sounds bad, then you probably didn't do it right. If it's loose and it sounds good, if it's really loose and it sounds good, it's probably just too loose. If it's like just the right amount, which is 0.01 millimeters up and down, and it sounds good, you probably did it right, but you still need to double check, and I'll show you how to double check right now. So I put the motor in, I'm putting the motor wires on just so I can also hear how it sounds. Sorry if I'm rambling too, it's just, it's kind of, I haven't really explained this to anyone before, but you get the idea. So, um, put the motor in. That's South Park in the background, by the way. My Xbox just started playing it for some reason. Whoa. Okay. So, some gearboxes don't have a port right there. Right there. Here, let me. Um, if they don't, it's not really a big deal. You can still see it from the top. But basically, what you're going to want to do is first. I first start with the motor because the motor the motor height might be a little. Um, some motors have a lot of play, like Lonex motors have a lot of play, so so I always do that just to set the opinion exactly where it's going to be when you're shooting the gun. Now get a long screwdriver, well, not really that long, but a thin screwdriver. I'll show you it from here. But basically, hold on, this right. Basically, you're gonna want it. I'm sorry, let me, let me get the right angle here. So you're going to want it so you have ever so little movement side to side. Ever so little. I don't even think the camera can pick that up. But you can hear a slight clicking, which means that it's, I mean, that is so little movement, but it's perfect. So. And then you obviously want to feel the distance by pushing down on the, uh, or just wiggling these two bearings on the uh, bevel, see how much move up and down movement there is. There should be about 0.01 millimeters or less of up and down movement. So, once you have that set, if you don't have shims at the top yet, I suggest putting them, although you don't technically have to. I mean, people run their guns without doing that, just because when the bevel is at a tight width opinion on it, it's going to be m maximum meshing, even if there aren't any shims on the bottom. So when the motor isn't in, you can move it up and down. When the motor is it, when the motor is not in, you can move it up and down. When the motor is in, you can't. Or it, it's at its perfect place. But I always like to put the shims just just so it's in its perfect place all the time. It's it's just kind of what I do. I mean, I'm, a lot of people do it as well, but some people don't. I suggest doing it, especially if you have bearings. You don't want. Um, that kind of thing on there. It's going to be too, too sketch. So, if you have that perfectly, good. If you don't, just keep trying. Keep taking shims on and off of the back of the bevel, putting them on, whatever. You want it, so I'm going to say it one more time, you want it, so there's 0.01 millimeters movement up and down, and ever so slight side to side movement. The side to side movement is mostly defined by motor height. So every time you add a shim on, you want to double check your motor height just to make sure it's right because if the bubble is here and the motor is here and it's perfect then you raise it up you're going to want to take it off just ever so slightly um, just because it's going to be tighter and closer together so and that doesn't happen all the time but sometimes if you add a lot of shims you're going to want to recheck the motor height otherwise you could be going in circles you could just keep adding shims or you could be taking off shims and your motor height's not right so it's not going to have that side to side movement. You're going to be like, what's wrong? Just double check your motor height. Just keep going back and forth between the half shell and this until you have it perfect, like this. It has 0.01 millimeters up and down, at least, or at most, and at most 0.01 millimeters side to side. 
and then put your whole gun together after you shim the other two gears, which I'll show you right now. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll quickly talk about it. Um, see how it sounds. If it sounds bad, do it again. Um, double check everything. Make it ever so slightly tighter, ever so slightly looser. It's just a trial and error kind of thing. If it sounds good, then just make sure the motor height is right. Make sure everything is right. Double check it because sometimes it can sound good even if it's not shown correctly. And if no matter what you do, it still sounds bad. It shouldn't sound horrible, but if it sounds bad, I mean, make sure your pinion and bevel combinations are. Maybe it's your pinion, pinion and bevel combination. I know Lonex bevels. I'm sorry, Lonex pinions don't like SHS bevels very much. I had to learn that the hard way. Kind of ruined my pinion here too a little bit, but it's still usable. So the bevel is the hardest part. Once you've got that down, uh, go ahead and move on to the other gears. And always make sure it's right before you put the gear under load. Otherwise, you're going to damage everything. You're going to damage your gears. Okay. So now, shim the other two gears. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to really close the gearbox and open it and check it because I already know it's right. But I'll just tell you guys how to do it. So, what you're going to want to do is next shim the spur because that's what's next to the bubble. Um, you want the spur and sector to be as low as possible just so they have the cutoff lever, excuse me, the cutoff lever has maximum contact. You don't have the things wearing down. And also you want good meshing with the piston. So the, as, the lower the better. In some cases you're going to have to shim it a little higher. I guess that's okay if there's nothing you can do about it. But you're going to want maximum meshing between these two gears, which means these the gear on the, the teeth on this are going to be have to be the same place, same level as the teeth on that. Once you have that right, obviously same. Uh, and then you shim the uh, spur to the gearbox shell by adding shims on top. First you add shims to the bottom, then on top. In this case, so you shim the height according to the bevel, then you add shims on here according to the tightness of the gearbox. You want 0.01 millimeters or less of play with the spur. The tighter the better for the spur. If you have bushings like I'm using on the spur, make sure you oil them properly, otherwise they will wear down very quickly, especially with ride SC gears under this high stress set. So the sector, you're going to want to shim it so the teeth don't touch it. And you sometimes when you do this, it might seem like it's grinding, then you close the gearbox and it's not. So make sure you test that over and over again. Make sure you have that perfect, the distance, the height of the uh, sector. Yeah. Um, so close that. So close the gearbox when you're testing the height just to make sure you know the gear's not wobbling and hitting it. Sometimes you want it as low as possible uh, to have maximum contact with the cutoff lever and the piston. So make sure you have that as low as possible while not grinding anymore. Then obviously shim it to the height of the gearbox. And then you're going to want to close the gearbox up and make sure nothing's wrong. Make sure all the gears are meshing well with each other and make sure they're not too tight again before you fire the gun. Some people like to run the gears under no load just to break them in. I don't understand that because the gears are going to break in anyways when you fire the gun, but if it makes you feel better, if it makes you sleep at night, you can do that too. Um, I mean, I already heard what the bevel pinion sounded like so I, with no load. I don't think it's necessary to really check it that many times, but you're going to want that that sound of the cutoff lever, by the way. You're going to want it so... Yeah, see there it's down there. You're going to want it so you can spin the gears freely. You don't want any friction. Obviously, if you're using bushings, it's going to have more friction than these bearings, but you want it so... You want it so you get a bunch of spins out of it. You want it so you, when you're feeling it, it feels like butter. It feels like, oh wow, there's no friction here. The gears aren't rubbing against each other. There's no weird screeching sounds that happen sometimes with bushings if they're worn down. If you spin them really fast, they're going to give you this screech sound. And you can fix that by oiling them up. Not greasing them, oiling them up really well. But that's only a temporary fix that just gets rid of the sound. Uh, if you're using bushings, always oil them through and through. So that's how you shim a gearbox. Um, you guys have heard how this gun sounds. This is my last DSG video. So, alright.
Thanks for watching.